Hi everyone, my name is Giovanna Proença and today we're going to talk about problem set 6, score five of CS50 introduction to programming with Python. If you have any question about programming or if you would like to ask, talk to someone about coding, you can enter in our new community, the link is in the description, all right? And we would like to emphasize that this video solution is made for those who have already completed the assignment and want to have an alternative view about the problem. We totally disencourage pleasure so this problem in here, we're gonna basically receive a CSV file like this one, where we have the last name and the first name, and then we have the house of the students of Hogwarts, all right? And we have to convert this into another CSV file where we're gonna put first the first name, then the last name, and finally the house, all right? So we have a few things to work with, for example, we have to receive the correct command lines in here. We have to receive uh, two CSV files, all right? We can't receive only the name of the Python file and or more than this. So we have to receive three arguments, okay? This is the first checking. And then we need to check if the file is CSV file and if the file exists, all right? This is kind of what we're gonna do. So let's just start. I already created here a pseudocode, all right? And we're gonna start with the check command line arguments, okay? So I created here a function called check command line our arguments, okay? And we're gonna check if we are receiving the correct things from the user, all right? So to do this, let's understand how the sys library works. The sys library in Python provides various functions and variables that are used to manipulate different parts of the Python runtime environment, specifically command line arguments. Command line arguments are those which are passed during the calling of the program, along with the calling statement. To achieve this using the sys module, the sys module provides a variable called sys rgv. Let's see this example. Let's suppose we have a file called test.py that looks like this. Import sys, so we're importing the module sys, and we're doing print sys.rgv. If we run test.py in terminal doing python test.py red, green, and blue, we can see that sys.rgv is a list of command line arguments. So we're printing the list test.py, the first element, the second element red, the third element green, and the fourth element blue. If we try to print the length of sys.rgv like the code above, so we're using the same file test.py, import sys, and we're doing print length sys.rgv. If we run the terminal again doing python test.py red, green, and blue, we will see that length sys.rgv provides the number of command line arguments, so we print the number 4. Finally, if we want to print the first element of our sys.rgv list, we can do, again, the same file test.py, we're importing the sys module and we're printing sys.rgv on position 0. If we run test.py in terminal doing again python test.py red, green, blue, then we check that sys.rgv0 is the name of the current python script, which is test.py. So now that we saw how it works, let's just start applying, all right? So first we need to check how many elements in the command line we are receiving. So we need to receive three arguments. So the name of the file, one CSV and another CSV file, okay? So three arguments. If we receive less than three, we're gonna display a message to a few command line arguments, okay? So let's just start implementing here. So if we do length of sys.rgv, rgv it's a list where it contains all the arguments in the command line is less than three what are we gonna do we're gonna use the sys exit to exit our code and display this message to a few command line arguments all right so let's try it out if i do python scorgify scorgify.py it will display this message to a few command line arguments and we're done okay and the other case is if the length of sys.rgv is greater than three, we're gonna display, a no, we're gonna exit our code, but we're gonna display a different message that will be too many command line arguments. Okay? 
So if we type in here Scourgeify before.csv after.csv and red, for example, it will display too many command line arguments. Okay? And finally, we need to check if it is a command if these two files are CSV or not. Okay? This is something extra. I don't think they mentioned this in here, but it's important to check. Okay, so we know that the element on position 1, so the second element, and the element on position 2, they're going to be the CSV file, so we can check. So if uh, .csv not in sys.argv on position 1 or .csv not in in sys.argv on position 2, what are we going to do? We're going to do here a message saying uh, file is not csv all right something like this not a csv file i think it's better not a csv file okay so for example if we type in here uh we remove the dot csv from after it will display not a csv file okay and if we get everything correctly it won't do nothing so far sorry here is csv if we put everything correctly here it will appear nothing all right so we are already checking the correct things okay so far so good now let's work with the csv file itself so we need to try to open the csv file okay and if we cannot open we're gonna display this message to, could not read invalid fa file dot csv and how are we gonna do this we're gonna do a try and accept okay so for example here we're gonna try to open the file and if we can't, we're gonna display a message. I think it's not in here, it's in the previous problem. But there's no problem. We're gonna do try, okay? And we're gonna try to open the CSV file, okay? And if we can't, I'm gonna already put this in here. Accept and something that we're gonna see. So the accept here is the file not found error. For example, we're going to do this thing. We're gonna display a message saying exit file uh, file blah 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 wasn't open so we're gonna say could not read file blah 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 so this is what we're gonna do okay could not read file and here we're gonna use the file that we were trying to read and here is our sys.argv on position one okay so we're going to try to read if we can't we're gonna display this message so now let's understand how can we read csv files for example, if we have a file called harry.csv that contains in the first line name, house, second line Harry Potter, Gryffindor, third line Ron Weasley, Gryffindor, and fourth line Hermione Granger Gryffindor. We can read this CSV file using Python. First, we need to open the txt file by storing the file in a variable using the withopen function. So in this case, we need to import the CSV library and we use with open the first input. We put the name of the CSV file we want to open and the second input the way that we want to open. In this case, R, because this means that we are reading. And then we say as CSV file. The CSV file can be any name as you want. Then we can read every line using two methods. The first one is using reader. So if we do, so if we create a variable called reader equals true, and then we use this function csv.reader, and inside the parentheses we put the name of the file we're opening, the reader function will create one list for each row of our CSV file. We can take a look at this by doing everything we had before, but now using a for loop. So for row in reader, if we print row, we're gonna see in every line of our output one list that contains the element of the row. The other method that we can use is the dict reader. So instead of doing reader equals to csv.reader, now we do reader equals to csv.dict reader and we pass the csv file inside the parentheses. The dict reader function will create one dictionary for each row of our CSV file. We can take a look at this by doing the same code that we had before 
and doing a for loop. So for row in reader, print row, and the output are all the rows in a format of a dictionary. So now that we understood how we can we read CSV files, let's start implementing. In this case, I'm going to read all the files from before.csv. This is our file before.csv. I'm going to read using dictreader, so every row will be a dictionary, all right? And this will help us a lot when we are trying to write in another CSV file, the after.csv. So in here, what are we going to do? We're going to say with uh, open, and what we want to open, the sys.argv on position one and I'm gonna put here the letter R because I want to read as CSV file for example and what are we, what we want to do I'm gonna create a file called reader and I'm gonna use this function dict 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 reader all right and what we want to read the CSV file so let's just start doing a for loop and see what we have for row in reader and let's see if we're getting the correct things from our row Okay, so if we run our file again, we see here that every row that is being displayed is one row from our before.csv and it's split in name and house. Okay, so what is our task now? Now we need to get the name and we're gonna change the order of the name. We're gonna put first name and then last name, all right, without this comma in between. And then we're going to keep displaying the house. Okay, so how can we do this? Like we can see in here, the names, they are divided by a comma. So we're gonna split the name using a comma, okay? So I'm gonna create a variable here called split name, for example. And I'm gonna use the row on and I'm gonna to access the name. So remember, this is a dictionary to access the, key, the value we use, the key name. And I'm gonna use a split and where I wanna split, where we have a comma. Okay, so let's see what we get. If I print split name, we receive this part here. So if I run this again, we are receiving a list where we have the first element is the last name and the second, the second element is the first name, all right? And we don't have a comma anymore in between them. The comma here is splitting the elements of our list. So this will be our new name, okay? So to start this new output, I'm gonna create a variable here called output and this output will be a list and now we're gonna append in this list the new rows for our new csv file okay so how are, are we going to do this let me remove these comments so how are we gonna do this i'm gonna call the list output okay and i'm gonna append a new element and what is the element we're gonna append we're gonna append here a dictionary where we have the key called name Okay, and what will be our new name? So our new name, it will be called first, sorry. Because if you take a look in here, in our specification, they are telling us to have here first, last, and house. So this is how we're gonna split. So first will be now the split name on position two. All right, so a split name here, the output that we're getting on position one sorry because we want to get the second element and i'm gonna use here the l strip to remove the this this empty space that we're having here in the first name all right then the second element of our dictionary will be last and our last will be the split name on position zero okay this is the last name and we're gonna have one more key here that will be house if I'm not mistaken, is house, house. And house will be the value that we're receiving from the CSV file itself. So it will be row on position on the house pair. Okay, so let's see what we have. Let's print here output to understand what we have so far. Okay, so clear. Uh, if I run again Python scorchify before.csv after.csv, this is our list of the output. I know it's a little bit messy, but we can see that it's a list. And let's see this last element. We have now the row separated by the first name, the last name, and the house. So now we are mixing our data with the way we're manipulating our data to display the way that they want us to output. Okay? Now the final touch is to write the new CSV file. So to create a new CSV file and write in there, let's see how it works, let's see this animation. To write in a CSV file, we can do something similar that we did for reading a CSV file. For example, if we have a file called harry.csv that is empty, 
and we can write in the CSV file using Python. First, we need to open the CSV file by storing the file in a variable using the with open function. So we're gonna have to import CSV and then we do with open harry.csv, and w, meaning that we wanna write a CSV file. Then we allow our CSV file to be written by using the writer function. So then we're gonna add the line 3, writer equals to csv.writer and in parentheses csv file. To add lines in our csv file, we have to use the write row function, where we add the columns of our row by adding a list. So we're gonna do writer, that is the name of our variable, dot write row, and inside the parentheses we put the list of the values that we wanna add. In this example, we're writing two rows. In the first one, we will have two columns, name and house. In the second row, we will have two columns as well, Harry Potter and Gryffindor. So now that we see this animation, let's finish the project, okay? So we're going to do exactly what we saw before. We're gonna use with open, and we're gonna open now the sys.argv on position two, okay? Let me clear here, on position two. Okay, and here instead of R, we're gonna use W because we wanna write in our file, as file, for example. And I'm gonna create a variable called writer, and I'm gonna use the CSV writer function. Okay, here the name of the variable, you can give any name, but this is the function that we're gonna use. And we wanna write in our file variable. Then we're gonna use the write row function, okay? One thing that we can add here, we can add the field names that it's going to contain our CSV file. So I'm gonna say in field names, and I'm gonna pass here the field names that we wanna add. So here it will be first, first, last, and houses. I think it's only house, yes. And now let's do a for loop in our out output list. So the list that we are, we, we stored all the data that now is manipulated with the one that we wanna display. And in every iteration, we're gonna write the row. So we're gonna do for row in, sorry, for row in output, for example. And we're gonna write in this row. So we're gonna do writer dot uh, write row right row and here we're gonna insert the things that we want to write so this is going to be the following first i'm just double checking here my second screen that's why i'm, I'm looking row on position first because this is the key if you remember from this output then we're gonna insert uh last on position row here last and house that it's our third column we're gonna insert here the value for house in our output okay and we can add one extra row here to display the, co the column name in the first row so we can do writer dot write row and here we can display this list where we're gonna contain the sorry a dictionary where we're gonna contain first first and this will be called first. So I'm kind of saying that this is the name of the fields, that's why we're putting here in a dictionary. This is the name of the field, all right? And this is the value, this is the name of the field, this is the value, this is the name of the field, and this is the value, okay? And we're gonna do the same for here, the heading. So last, this will be, this will display last, and house, and this will display house, okay? So right now our after.csv it's empty, but once we write we we run our file, it's calling field names does not exist. Let me double check. Field names file dict reader. Sorry, it's not writer. It's dict writer. Alright, dict writer. I'm sorry, this is the dict writer function. And if we run this again. It's going to display here in the after.csv the CSV file that we were talking about, okay? So I know it's a little bit confusing working with CSV, it's a little bit complicated, but this is how we do. All right, if you have any questions, just send here on the comment or enter in our new community. Now I'm gonna rerun check 50 and we can see how it looks like. 
So like we can see in here, we got our green. So this means that we are correct. All right. I hope you enjoyed this content. Please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions in here in the comment or be one of our new students in our community and you're going to have 24 seven support with our coding experts. Okay. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye.